Hey there, I'm your host Lesoe, and this is part 9 of our equipment system series. In today's video, we'll be covering the save and load functionality of the equipment system. So with that said, let's begin. Let's start by going into our content drawer. And somewhere in here, let's right click and create a new folder for our save system. So we'll call it save underscore system. Let's open this up. And the first thing we'll do is we'll go to our blueprint class and look for something called a game instance. And you'll find this in all classes, game instance. And I'll call it GIB for game instance blueprint underscore my game. Let's save this. And it's very good to go into your settings as soon as you create it and switch that game instance. Sometimes if your game doesn't save or load, it's because you just haven't changed it here. So make sure it's there. With that out of the way, let's go ahead, right click and go to Blueprint class yet again. And we'll look for something called a save game. And let's call this SGB for save game blueprint underscore player data. And in here, we want a map, the exact map that we had in our component. So we'll go ahead, create a new variable. Let's call it our equipment um, data. And let's do a E underscore equipment category. Let's then change this to a map and our values will be a name. With that, let's compile and save. We can exit this now. And next, let's go ahead and right click, go to our blueprints and do a blueprint interface, calling this BPI underscore save game. And let's open this up. The first function we want is to be is to be able to retrieve the game data. So we'll call it game or uh, get game data with the outputs being our um, player data. So player data and the variable type will be SGB underscore player data. Just the save game we made. Next function will be for loading the game data. So load game data doesn't need any inputs or outputs. We then have our save game data. And very lastly, we'll have our save player equipment. And in here, we just want the same map like we had in the save game. So we'll do equipment data and we'll do E underscore equipment category, make this a map and we'll have name for values. So once you're all done, compile and save that then. And we'll head back over to our game instance blueprint. Now in here, what we want to do is you can either go to functions and look for init, or let's just do event init. And there we go. Event init. Right. Next, let's go to class settings and implement our interfaces. So BPI underscore save system, which we just made. On load game data, we'll then do a does save game exist. For the slot name, you can either create a variable or just plug it in. So slot one and make sure this name is consistent. Otherwise, your stuff may not save. With that, then on true, we'll do load game from a slot, load game from slot. Now, this will only happen if there is a game data existing slot one. And then we'll do a cast to SGB layer data. And let's promote this to a variable sgb underscore player data like so now if this does not exist well then we'll do a create save game object plug in our sgb and promote this to a variable again like so and um, let's comment our code to load game data let's make it show bubble when zoomed and on event init what we'll do is load game data and you're focusing on the function saying target is your game instance. So GIB my game. With that out of the way, uh, let's go to get game data. And since we have the uh, reference here, plug that into there and you're all done. Next, let's take care of save game data. This is very simple. We'll do save game to slot and just add in your save game and your name slot one. Let's comment this save game data bubbled when zoomed. And lastly, we want to cover the safe player equipment. 
in here all you will need is let's grab this player data and do set equipment data plug that in there and at the very end we'll do save game data once again target being your game instance blueprint so let's do that and we can also comment this saves uh, player equipment data and let's bubble it so with that we're all done in here let's compile and save that and we can exit next let's head over to our wardrobe component so equipment system wardrobe here and we want to create a new function called get equipment data and in here we want to do a return node and this will be a map like we had previously so we'll do equipment data and we'll do e underscore equipment category map and name as values and just drag your equipment list plug it into there and you're all set let's also click on this function and add it to a category called save system to have it organized in case we need to edit it or modify it in some shape or form with that let's also create a new function called load uh, equipment data and let's also drag it into our save system there in here then we want to create an input and this will be our equipment list and then we'll do get game instance and we'll do get game data like so and let's connect that and out here we'll do get uh, equipment data we want to set this equipment list like so and then what we want to do is we'll do a keys node so this gets us all of those categories that we have and we'll do a for each loop we then want to um, get our equipment list like so and we want to see if um, we found this array element there now, if we did, if this is true, um, we'll simply do a equip item function there. And this category here will come again from the array element like so. So with that complete, we can compile and save it. And then in our event graph on event begin play. Here we want to do a check does save game exist. Once again, slot name should be the same, must be the same actually. We'll do a branch and we'll do a check. We'll get our game instance and we'll do get game data once again. And out here we'll do get equipment, get equipment data. And we'll do load equipment data, which is the function in here, like so. And on false, if there is nothing there, we'll do a print string. And we'll say um, no data to load with a D at the end. OK, then. Uh, like so. OK, so with that, we're pretty much done. We need to create one more thing. So in our content drawer, in our safe system, let's right click and create a blueprint function library. And we'll do bp underscore um, save functions like so. Let's open this up and call it save player data. In here, we'll grab our get hero. We'll do get component by class, wardrobe component. And uh, then we'll do get equipment data like so connect that into there we want to once again grab our get uh, game instance and then we'll do save player equipment connect that there connect that here and at the very end we'll just do a print string to make sure okay cool the game has been saved game saved exclamation point english okay so we just need to call this somewhere so let's compile and save and we can call it in the component since the player already owns it. So let's do keyboard one. And if we click on this, then we can choose a different key. So I'll do Z 
and we can do save player data and you can see pp save functions so that's where it's being stored so with that let's compile save go into our game here then and when we hit play we can see that there is no data to load shows up on the top left and if we were to put on some pants maybe a shirt and some glasses maybe even a bow and if we save our game game saved exit come back and boom everything is getting saved so that's pretty good now i would like to do some finishing touches on the ui since i kind of rushed through everything like we can see the borders are bigger than the borders here so let's quickly go ahead and do that so most of this will be in the ui or if if not all so we'll start with the equipment slot click on the root there we'll do padding 2 and if we click on the images we can change that padding from 4 to 2 on both of these and that should fix it so let's compile and save and how does this look a lot better okay now for the inventory slots the same thing inventory slot click on the root padding 2 and make sure it's focusable do we have it there now you don't have to but if you have a controller this might help it's focusable compile and save compile and save and how is the wardrobe slot looking is it the same is focusable there and we'll do padding too so that's pretty much it uh let's see how this looks like let's open this up okay looking pretty nice and yeah so guys this is going to be it for the series i hope you enjoyed if you liked the video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and as always, happy developing.